The terms casket and coffin are often used interchangeably, but their use as synonyms is no open and shut case. Coffins are actually those eight-sided burial boxes that are narrower at the bottom. Think Dracula. Whereas caskets are rectangular, they can be made of metal, plastic, or wood. Whether the wood is ash, oak, mahogany, or something else, the casket's construction is generally the same. First, they run wood slats through a machine called a molder. This profiles the edges, carving a tongue on one side of each slat and a groove on the other. A worker applies glue to these edges, then positions the slats in a rounded vise that locks the tongues and grooves together. The glue dries in an hour and a half, bonding the slats permanently into a large curved piece. This piece will form the top and long sides of the casket's rectangular cover. To complete the rectangle, a worker now makes a V-shaped cut on each side and glues in a triangular piece of slatted wood. While a press clamps the components tightly together, he secures the end pieces in place with joint fasteners, which are like heavy-duty staples. Now a machine carves a groove into the cover's underside at the midpoint. A worker glues in a wooden piece, securing it with joint fasteners. This piece is called the bridge, and it's the point at which the cover will be cut in half later on. They transfer the casket cover to an automated machine that gives it a rough sanding, then a finer sanding. The next step is to attach a decorative molding to the base of the casket cover. This molding has a groove on the inside, into which they'll later tuck the edge of the casket's upholstery fabric. A worker glues a small piece of wood in the groove at the midpoint so the groove won't show when the cover is open. Now he saws the casket cover in two, right through the bridge. Meanwhile, another worker assembles the bottom of the casket called the box. He glues together the sides and applies a bottom molding, securing everything with joint fasteners. At this point, the box is upside down. He attaches the bottom, then flips the box right side up. Now it's time to join the cover and box using four hinges. They spray the casket with one of countless shades of wood stain, then rub it in equally over the entire surface. The casket goes into an oven for an hour to dry the stain. Next, a worker sprays on two coats of lacquer with 40 minutes drying time between applications. This happens to be a high gloss finish, but many models have a dollar sheen. Once the lacquer dries, a worker attaches handles. The more expensive the casket, the fancier the features. This higher-end oak model with decorative corners has wood and metal swing handles. Other models have all-metal swing handles or fixed bars made of wood, metal, or both. The fancier caskets also have an adjustable wooden bed inside with a mechanism to adjust the height. A worker covers the bed in fabric. The base model bed is made of absorbent paper laid over a product called wood wool, which is simply shredded wood. The upholsterer lines the inside of the casket with foam covering it with either velvet, satin, or silk polyester crepe. By folding, nailing, and stapling this fabric a certain way, she creates pleats, tufting, and other design details. Generally, the more expensive the casket, the finer the fabric, and the more ornate the upholstery. A decorative trim hides the staples. Fabric straps or metal elbow brackets hold the cover open. When it comes to how beautiful and elaborate caskets can be, the ground's the limit. <laughs>